I'm Steve Houston. Welcome to another Life Drawing session. In this session, I'm going to try and really create character. I'm going to look for a personality and see if I can bring some emotion out to those drawings. I want you to do it too. They're not just marks. It's not a tube for an arm. It's something that means something. So let's get started. I'm using a Sharpie marker for this. Oftentimes I use them very uh, um, dried out. This one's pretty new. So you can see the lines are quite black. And uh, once you put them down, they're there. They're not moving. And that's a good way to do these. You don't want to be um, erasing on these, although it's going to be very tempting at first. Because um, you just want to make the marks leave it. You'd make your best guess in the limited time you have. And then let it be. Don't let the paper stop your proportions. Just trying to get the flow. When we have a key, a couple parts coming together, I spend a little time trying to get a sense of the connection, whatever that is. And then move on back into the, the new fluid direction. I have more time I go back and work on those connections. Maybe I'll um, add some key detail like a shadow. You can work nice and big. You can work smaller. If you work uh, real big, you've got more coverage. It takes time just to cover the real estate. So don't work super big. Usually I work uh, somewhere around an inch, inch and a half for the head. You know, it can be down, here's a half inch, it can be up to closer to two, but usually it's that inch and a half range is a comfortable size to be working. And you see the kind of shortcuts you come up with for various things. You run into those problems eventually again and again, and you have your certain default go-to shapes and then you can of course um, play with those and try and get inventive, come up with new solutions. But um, Okay, so now I'm switching to a ballpoint pen and notice the difference. It's a subtle, more nuanced medium, much finer, lighter, and it's going to affect, you know, it's a different instrument. It's like switching from the uh, snare drum to the piccolo. It's going to, the energy of the instrument itself is going to affect how you play that part, how you play that music. So notice it slowed me down. I'm making more refined choices. The other had this crude energy, this kind of shotgun blast energy. This is much more nuanced. This is a scalpel if the other is a bazooka. And so pay attention to the medium you choose, the medium you're ch stuck with, or what you're trying to say in your art might dictate the medium you pick from.
You know, so I noticed on that one I had what I needed in that with a little extra time, and so I went back and corrected, double checked, emphasized. Here we go. Uh, face is turning away from us, those nice oval features. So when I'm choosing the shape, I'm trying to get the sense of the character of the shape I'm matching. The head shape has a round character. Another face or head might have a square character. So choose the shape that's the most descriptive. Or sometimes choose two or three shapes instead of one shape. 
in this case, I'm going to get a round shape, and I'm going to take a little notch out of it for the uh, eye socket. There's the nose. And sometimes I get lost in a little area, and I plan to do that whole big figure, and I just end up with a head. I didn't ever get any farther, and there's nothing wrong with that. Because what I did is I explored the possibilities. I tried to make it ring true with what I did. And hopefully I learned something or taught my audience something. So there's no finish line. Don't feel pressured to do anything other than what you're able to do in the time you're given. And it's not going to be the same as what I do or anybody else does. It's not, you don't have to compare. This is practice. It's your unique voice developing, your choices being realized and tested and over time changed and refined. It's all good stuff, so try and have fun with it, not beat yourself up. So this is a leaning over, even falling over onto that arm. So I want to get that strong horizontal move with the head and neck, and that strong angular move with the torso. Basically, she's stretching between two supports. Her knees, she's kneeling, and this arm. This arm here. And this kneeling posture here. Notice when you have a very uh, stationary figure, oftentimes you get a big triangle out of the design. You get a narrow top and a wide base because that's the most stable. Even the really energetic poses, the models doing 30 second, one minute, five minute poses, oftentimes you'll see that triangle design because she's, she or he is throwing off angles to this or that body part to make it look dynamic. But the overall design is a wide base, a narrow top, and that narrow top is sitting over or between the base. Notice the top weight, the head and the rib cage, is right down between the supporting system of the kneeling lap and the dynamic thrusting arm. So what's supporting that pose? What's holding it in that position? You want to um, have thought that through, ideally. Reclining pose, heads lifting up to kind of glance our way or some way. Almost like a mini skirt shape for the hips there. Andrew Loomis always used that for his fashion model characters in his illustration. They always had that same hip, kind of girdled shape. So 
So kind of if you can name it, name the shape you're drawing, give it a, a, a personality rather than just a box, be specific. A mini skirt shape, the barrel, pickle barrel shape, a loaf of bread shape, whatever it is, you're better off. I didn't even look at the arm there. All right, so five minutes. I take more care. There's this certain turn to that head. Eyebrow and eye line, kind of mark that off. There's a certain squareness to her brow. As framed by her hairline. I don't want to play up, and you can see kind of the boxy quality here. Sometimes it helps to kind of come out and uh, reimagine that shape as something squarer or simpler or make it three or four shapes rather than one shape or take something that got too complicated, simplify it, that kind of thing. And notice that the hand, the head, and the knee all come together more or less close contact. And so that's going to be something that really needs to track correctly for my drawing, probably. So I'm going to go ahead and sketch those meetings, those three forms meeting together pretty carefully. I'm going to blow a lot of time on that. And then I'll come back, the hips over here, or the hips over here, or the hips over here, or the hips here. And those kind of connections, the way the shoulder and torso swing out and back, out and back, how the arm covers, those kind of things can move around a little bit and I've got room for error. So when you're working on a, a pose, if you have contact points, the hands are on the hips, the uh, chin is on the chest, that kind of stuff. Those things probably have to be there. And so, but the other things, where the elbow floats when the hands are on the hip, not such a big deal. You can move that elbow up a little bit, down a little bit to make the arm and forearm the right depth, and you'll be absolutely fine. So now watch the fact that, uh, let's move this not too far off from where it was, but let's make it a little longer than it really was. And so that torso goes down a little farther than it really did. And uh, notice how there's little or no damage done by doing that. Where this part ends right here. the fact that it should have been up here, that's a, it's pretty forgivable. But these guys, if these are off, it's not so forgivable. So kind of know your contact points. Where major, minor, important forms, where those forms touch, make contact, where their placement has to be uh, quite accurate. Build the, that placement and then go out to the corner connection. I work from here out to here to get that connection. Foot doesn't matter. If the foot should be here or here, who cares? As long as it feels pretty good, we're, uh, we can live with that. And the audience will forgive you that, but not that knee. So think contact points.
right side. Okay, we have a little bit of perspective here. The head and shoulder, shoulder girdle are coming towards us. Hips are going away from us. And so we need to show that. Interesting dynamic. So pretty careful with the head since I've got that uh, gesture I need to do. We've got um, shoulder girdle coming towards me here. Always kind of relate the separate things in some kind of relationship together. So I'm trying to think of the two shoulder structures that are separate, how they flow through the head and neck interruption and work together. It'll help that bilateral symmetry that the figure has. Help it feel like it's cohesive from side to side if you draw through those interruptions. Draw through the cheek, the uh, nose interruption to see the cheekbones, for example. And in this uh, instance, I made the uh, shoulders a little bigger and the, uh, the uh, hips a little smaller compared to the reference because I wanted that perspective, that coming out. The shoulders and head are closer to us, the hips are farther, and then we have the leg, one leg in flat perspective more or less down here and the other, and again, a deep perspective coming out and going back in. But it's that, uh, the important thing is that uh, torso, head and torso relationship, torso size, dynamics. Don't make it right, make it true. So the truth is that head and shoulder and rib cage is closer to us, and the hips and tummy area is farther from us, and so we push that dynamic difference. So we really make the point. Don't make the joke just clever, make it hilarious. Don't make the, uh, the monster spooky, make him terrifying. Really push the idea. Okay, and now I have a little extra time. I don't have enough time to really do any rendering. But I do have time to uh, kind of refine my connections. How does that neck come into that shoulder and collarbone area? How do that sh those shoulders work against the trapezius, the shrugging muscles, and then into the tricep and bicep? And then kind of taking a moment before you're done and just looking at the whole thing. Is it overall working 
as a piece or did I real, not realize I made the feet way too big. If you're getting discouraged, you feel like this is too advanced for you because it's, uh, when you're working from a figure like this, it's intermediate level oftentimes. If you need a little bit more foundational advice on how to begin, maybe even uh, simpler subjects to work with, with the figure, come to the new Masters Academy website. We have a lot of content for all levels. So I hope you're drawing all week long. I'll see you next time and good luck.